Over the years, the entry level segment has changed drastically. Nowadays, for less money, you can get a decent phone, if you lower your expectations that is. Go back a few years however, and the entry level segment was wildly different from what it is today. This time point was before Chinese brands like Xiaomi, Realme and others dominated the smartphone industry, in India at least. Brands like Micromax, Carbon and the like came up with decent to good offerings in the entry level segment. We'll be taking a look at one such phone, which was a feature phone with a touchscreen, released from a brand mostly known for its flagships, Samsung, and the phone being the Samsung Rex 80 from 2013. Usually, phones in the entry-level segment look generic, and this one is no exception. The design of the phone is kind of similar to the earlier models of the iPod Touch line, and that is not a bad thing, because the design of the iPod Touch was very classy and minimal. The iPod similarity is complemented with this brushed metallic silver finish, which looks nice and also does not look cheap. The build quality is typical entry-level stuff, plastic everywhere. It has a plastic back, and the front is also made from plastic. Also, as you might have noticed by now, the phone has gotten a few dings and scratches, which confirms it is plastic. Overall, the design looks nice and the phone is also well built. This might need no confirmation, but the display on the Rex 80 is not really great, even for 2013 standards. The 3 inch 4x3 aspect ratio TFT panel was not an issue, but the other aspects are not great, even for 2021. It was a resistive type display, which uses pressure to sense touches. This type of display is not as responsive and accurate as a capacitive display, which uses the static electricity from fingers to sense touches. Another problem was the resolution which is 240 by 320 pixels and at 133 pixels per inch this thing is definitely not sharp. Lastly the display only produces 256,000 colors which is nowhere near the standard 16 million colors that every display produces nowadays. The display can get bright enough at max brightness under direct sunlight though it is bright at night with the lowest brightness setting. The display is just average at best. The storage is straight up lackluster, although for a device like this, it was fine for the most part. The phone came with 20 megabytes, yes, megabytes of internal storage. Fortunately, you can expand the storage via the dedicated micro SD card slots, which supports up to 16 gigabyte cards. The software was not anything fancy. No, this is not an early version of Android running here. You probably would have guessed it by the lackluster internal storage, but rather runs a proprietary OS based on Java. The software looked more like TouchWiz, which isn't a bad thing. One good thing is that the software was not as bloated as TouchWiz for Android back in the day. Performance is a struggling point for the device. The exact processor is unknown, although from what I can find, it is powered by a Samsung-made single-core processor. In real life though, the performance isn't a strong point. While stock apps are fast enough, the ones from which you can side load to the device are not as fast. Sometimes even stock apps feel sluggish, but for light daily tasks, it is above average. Before moving on to the cameras, let us talk about the extras. There is onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 3.0, which are not really speedy but are definitely nice to have. The rear-facing single speaker gets loud, but the sound output feels hollow. Ringtones though are very loud on this device. There is a headphone jack at the top left, of which the output is actually very good. The cellular reception was not too bad either, though do note that this is a 2G only device. The phone has a 3.2 megapixel rear facing camera and no selfie camera. There is no flash to help with low light, though there is a very basic night mode included in the camera software. The photos produced are at a maximum of 3.2 megapixels in the 4x3 aspect ratio, and the maximum resolution produced is 2048 by 1536 pixels. Video is recorded at 144p resolution, 176 by 144 pixels to be exact. 
The photo and video samples which will be displayed are outputted at their maximum quality. You can draw your own conclusions on the camera from the sample photos and videos taken from the Rex 80. The battery life however is one of the phone's strongest points. While 1000 mAh is really small on paper, in real life however, this thing lasts like a real champ. Any user can easily get passed through a day or two days. Standby times were also amazing as well. With the phone being in an idle on state, this thing can last up to two months on standby. This number was derived after testing and I'm not making it up. Charging speeds however is not really a big concern as it can fill the 1000 mAh battery in pretty quick time if you temper your expectations. A full charge takes around an hour. The battery life overall is exceptional though if the battery has aged very badly then you might get slightly worse or even more worse battery life. There you have it, the Rex 80 review in 2021. It was really fun reviewing this device. It truly is a gadget of the past. The entry level segment in 2021 is much better than how it was a few years ago. 2013 was an interesting year for this segment as it saw the rise of the entry level androids while witnessing the fall of the Java based feature phones. If you are planning to buy this device in 2021, it can be a yes and no depending on the reason behind buying it. No for a main device but yes for a backup device as it has great battery life and yes for a kid starter phone because of the small size. Do keep in mind that the phone is mostly out of stock since it is a discontinued model. That's it for this video. If you like this video, hit the like button and to see more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button with the bell icon so you won't miss our upcoming uploads.